my name is Claire. And I'm Ashling. And I'm Naomi. And our project is called What If Farmers Were Pharmacists? What we're suggesting is a new way of producing a treatment to chronic pain. Opiorphin is a naturally occurring peptide originally isolated in human saliva. And we're suggesting that this, is, this be produced in the milk of transgenic cows. What we're suge suggesting is not a completely impossible concept. Human antithrombin 3 is an anticoagulant drug which was produced in the milk of goats. There are many problems associated with the current treatment of morphine. These include addictiveness, development of resistance and adverse side effects. Six million Americans a year abuse pain medication and deaths in the US alone amount to 15,000 a year. So what are the advantages of our treatment? Sorry, to start with, what is opiorphin? Opiorphin is a peptide first isolated from human saliva with endogenous, that works by preventing the degradation of endogenous opioids found in the human body. It appears to be a promising therapeutic as it shows the ability to reduce sensitivity to painful stimuli in several pain models. The advantages are, it has been demonstrated that opiorphin is, is efficient in pain inhibitory potency as morphine. There are also minimal side effects, and in contrast to morphine, opiorphin does not lead to the dependency of the drug. Uh, there's no tolerance and, um, after prolonged treatment. Opiorphin is also tenfold more potent than ORB101, which is a synthetically manufactured chemical that works by the same mechanism. In order to, to create a tr transgenic cow, we would insert the gene for opiorphin along with the required elements for successful gene expression, including the Cassian promoter, which is mammary gland specific, into, the pro into a pronucleus, which would then be injected into her hormonally synchronized recipient. Okay, so the user of this, um, so the user of this product would be people who suffer from chronic pain who are looking for alternative methods um, to deal with the pain. So either because they've built up a tolerance to other medicines, they don't have access to medicines, or else they just can't afford it anymore. So in order to sort of uh, get an idea of how, what people think of this idea, we did like a, a test and we set up uh, five different types of um, pain relief. Um, so morphine, oxidone, opioid from milk, acupuncture, and medical marijuana, because we wanted both scientifically proven ones and alternative ones. And we, uh, we surveyed 30 people, and we found that 63% 60, of people picked um, opioid from milk because it's easier to take, um, and it's easier access to it, um, and it has less side effects. Um, so future possibilities we see for this is that it could expand into other dairy products like yogurt, cheese, flavored milks, and then possibly soya. Um, for lactose intolerant people, and then we think this really good benefits people who aren't usually targeted by pharmaceutical companies, and it would really bring um, more money into sort of farming companies um, and support local cottage industries. Okay, so for the future, if we won, um, we'd like to continue exhibiting our project um, at Future Lab, Ars Electronica, and here in the Science Gallery at Grow Your Own. Um, this would have an audience of about two, 250,000 people, so we'd hope to be able to get some funding from this and also take on board any advice and criticism that they might have. Um, and then for the next 12 to 18 months, we would need to research um, the feasibility of the project if it would actually work. Um, so hope we, our aim would be to secure a grant from Chagas through the um, Walsh Fellowship Trust, which would give us 21,000 for uh, PhD students. So hopefully if we could get two, then they would be able to help us with our research and materials and then take um, pilot research and then clinical trials could be in the future if this was uh, good if we found that it was worthwhile. And then obviously this would take about 10 to 15 years to actually become on the market. So we would need to continue fundraising if we were to be able to continue our research. But also at the same time, uh, through this project, we found that there's a lot of misconceptions about um, synthetic biology and ethical issues. So we'd like to continue our work as uh, scientific communicators, continue exhibiting, maybe get a few Arts Council grants so that we could answer these questions and change people's opinions, maybe make them more open to um, the idea of uh, genetically modified cows and, in general, the scientific, sci synthetic biology um, market. So thank you so much for listening. Um, any questions?
this type. Uh, is this working? That's right. Hello? That's better. Um, I wonder, is it deliberate that you chose cows? Because this is a project designed for Ireland. Do you anticipate that when applying to a variety of different councils, including the Arts Council, who aren't as tightly integrated with science, do you think that the concept of Irish agriculture being linked into biotechnology like this might scare anyone off? Um, we did actually intentionally pick cows because it's an Irish thing. Also because um, the price of milk is falling, so we thought that would help farmers. And also, um, I looked a lot into the science of it and creating transgenic animals. And um, if you use things like plants, often um, they're not they don't have the same post-translational modifications, so they're not able to um, create a fully functional protein. So that was one of the reasons we picked cows, because they have similar, similar um, systems to humans, because they're both uh, mammals. Well, let's let's mammals. And prove the artistic merit of science in cows ages ago. Cows are awesome. Um, but I mean, uh, cows being awesome aside, this is actually based on the science behind opiorphan as well then? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any idea of the costs of developing this? Well, because it's um, a scientific... Do you want to take it? Or? Oh, because it's a scientific project, um, it would, of course, take, as Ashling said, quite a long time to develop. So you've got to go through all the rigorous research, the scientific trials. So um, we have ideas of initial costs, but long term, um, it's hard to predict how much it would take. What, what sort of regulatory barriers might you encounter, do you think, in developing this? I think um, it would be the same as any uh, chemical compound that you try to develop. Um, you'd have to go through rigorous clinical trials and so on. But um, that's not something you can, you can surmount. Like, you have to go through that with any drug. So.